Hello, I'm Avery Kaplan. I'm the comm officer at Prism Comics and the features editor at Comics Beat. I'm here today to discuss the standard comics script. Camilla, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Camilla Zhang, um, currently senior editor at Z2 Comics. Um, I'm a writer myself, um, having been uh, published by <laughs> actually Z2 also and um, Top Cow and um, Cross Genres. And um, yeah, I mean, I've been dedicated to the comics community for a while. Um, you know, started my career as an intern at DC Comics in 2005 and basically have been in comics since then. And um, formerly I was the comics outreach lead at Kickstarter. So um, really excited to talk about the standard comic script because it's, it's such a treasure, hopefully, hopefully will be such a treasure to the community. And hello, my name is Steens. I am a professional cartoonist and editor and a professor. I am the cartoonist on the syndicated comic strip, Heart of the City. I have also done many other graphic novels and comics from anthologies to mini comics to uh, my first graphic novel, Archival Quality from Oni Press. I also edit, uh, and uh, with small publishers. I've edited with Mad Cave Studios. I've done some light editing with Scholastic. And I also teach comics here in St. Louis at Webster University. So I teach cartooning in the fall. And uh, I'm also really excited about the standard comic strip. You know, as an editor and as a collaborator, you know, there's, we always need something to make the process of making comics a lot easier. And we definitely feel like it all starts with the comic script and having a standard one. Was there a particular origin story for the standard comic script? Did it come out of a specific event or? Um, I'm trying to remember because this was like back in like 2020. I think um, we were in uh, the Discord server that I run with uh, Wendy Shu. Um, for marginalized creators uh, in comics. And every week we have like a, a, a discussion for the server. And I think one of those weeks was scripts and how you like to tackle them. And from that conversation, we found that, you know, why isn't there a standard one? Because they we all seem to be working in different ways, but we all have a very similar base. And from that is where I was like, well, why don't we just make a standard template, something that you can customize as needed with your collaborator, but a starting place, because it's clear that that's something that we all want and what, and what we need. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, from that discord conversation, um, you know, people were sharing, you know, their, their own personal templates and also like, you know, sharing feedback with uh, about like the the various different templates and like what how they preferred to work and um you know from there we we kind of cobbled together uh a unified template based off of other people's templates you know what i mean like so one of the things that came up in conversation was like you know the film industry has the screenplay they have a stand there's only one way to do a screenplay and all screenwriters like go according to that template. Um, otherwise, you know, like if you if you had a different format and <clears throat> you know different sort of like font or whatever, you know, whoever the producer or whoever is looking at your screenplay is going to be like, what like toss? You know what I mean? So like in order, it's not we're not trying to say like, oh, you know what like that person's way is the wrong way it's just that you know i think that because the film industry is so big it it has to be the certain things just have to be simple and straightforward so that they don't spend a lot of time deciphering what your screenplay means in order to like visualize what's going to happen i have sort of a related follow-up question comics are increasingly being adapted into new formats including audio formats can you speak to how the standard comic script will help facilitate adaptations like these and others i mean i i think that it, it helps in in the way that you need a starting point you know 
I think that's one of the biggest things that we really want to get across to people when we talk about this standard comic script is that this is a starting point. You know, what, what kind of collaborative team you have and how you guys work together is really up to you, you know, like, um, so if you want to change the script so that it, it, it works for you as you try new things with comics, that is also okay because then you have a starting point to make that change you know otherwise it, i feel like it would be even harder to you know branch out of typical comic production if you didn't have something to start with to begin with you know so well, I, well, I think it'll be helpful yeah and, and specifically i think in the template we have a section on like panel descriptions sort of like the, there's a key with um that goes with the template that kind of explains the role of each portion of the um, template. So like for under panel description, we kind of have a best practices suggestion to say that that says basically like think of a panel description as like stage direction, you want to talk about mood, you know, um, and like the emotion of that panel. Um, so I think that that is will directly translate to like adapting a comic to different mediums because as long as you kind of like stay true to um not necessarily exactly what happens in the panel but like the sort of overall mood and the overall maybe um uh, theme that goes into the panel um i think that lends itself well to um adaptation Will the standard comic script help in the process of teaching comics? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, when, when I teach comics, I use the standard comic script. Um, and I like to use it just so that these new creators know where to begin. I feel like the comics industry is already rather closed door. You need to kind of know somebody to get in and when you get in, you have to produce, <laughs> you know, you have to be able to know what you're doing. So uh, yeah, I absolutely think it's gonna be helpful when it comes to teaching for sure. And then yeah. also it's better to have a standard across education so that when, we, when they do get to the industry, we're all coming from a similar background, you know? Like too many times have we have had situations where creators are like, oh, well, I learned to do it this way. So this is the way we should do it. And oh, well, I learned how to do it this way. So maybe we should do it this way. And all of that conversation is taking up too much time in the comics creation process, you know? So not only is it great for teachers, but for editors as well. Because then an editor isn't really gonna have to spend any time trying to decipher a script before they can edit it because they already know what the layout is going to be. So, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 pretty incredible how many scripts I've had to edit purely on a formatting basis in order to actually understand what is going on. <laughs> like, yeah, you wouldn't believe that like you know words can become confusing because they're supposed <laughs> to be used to communicate clearly, but somehow like a sentence will be constructed in such a way that is just makes it indecipherable. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't indecipherable. That was a really long <laughs> sentence. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't teach. Um, I'd be happy to teach if someone asked me, but that's not my like profession. Um, but I, I would imagine that because there is a key that comes with the template, it lends it's and it's color coded and everything like it, it it I see it as a really useful tool because it's it's you know it comes in parts mm -hmm. and each part is described and its role is explained and how it works with the entire ecosystem of scripting you know um I think you mentioned already <laughs> screenwriting, but I was curious if there were any other script writing formats or techniques that inspired you, whether from comics or anywhere else? Well, I think for inspiration, I mean, I, I think that was where we kind of began the process was, you know, send me your scripts, send me 
what you like to do. And then I know uh, Comics Experience has a whole section on their site where you can see scripts that are written by professional writers, you know? So being able to look through those and, and try and see what the common denominators were was really helpful when it came to creating the first draft, you know? So um, I think most of my inspiration comes from what people are already doing. I don't want, I didn't want to use like a screenplay as a base because that is for film, you know, like all the reasons why it's laid out the way it's laid out is so that the process of film production is seamless. So all the ways that our script uh, is laid out is for seamless production, you know, but it's not the same kind of production. It's completely different. So I just wanted to make sure that we were using what was already working and getting rid of the things that felt superfluous. Mm -hmm. 100%. That's fascinating. So it was like a synthesis. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like a lot of people are going to see this and be like, well, where did you come up with this? <laughs> you know, why, why, why this and why not that? And it's like, well, when you get a ton of scripts together and really lay out what's working, what's not working, it comes from a lot of different people. And I think that's one of the things that's nice about our script is that it is something that was community organized. You know, we reached out to plenty of people from artists to writers to letterists to colorists to teachers to editors to marketing professionals I mean we just wanted to hear from everyone so that when we started with that first base before we started making changes we knew that this is going to be something that everyone's going to feel okay with mm -hmm. super interesting I'm curious if there's any part of the design process for the standard comic script that posed a particular challenge for you. You mean in terms of like um, whether or not to center something or like color code something? Exactly. Like, um, I feel like the biggest thing that we had an issue with was uh, dialogue numbering <laughs> for yeah. lettering. Because yeah. like, we can see both sides of the situation here you know on on the one end you know letterers are going to want to know exactly where things need to be and on the other hand the artist needs to know where these letters are going to go when they do their thumbnail so that they have enough space so while writers and artists may want one thing like the numbering letterers may not want that numbering because it may get confused in panel number and page number you know it's just extra stuff that we don't need and then that they can figure out through context in the way that the script is laid out where they already know where it's supposed to go now i think we ended up without the numbering because we wanted to defer to the letterer since this was a letterer focused portion of the script but then we go back to the customization aspect of it you know if your collaborative team is like actually i do want those numbers just add them back in <laughs> you know it's really not a big deal yeah. yeah and if like you know if the letterer doesn't want it but the artist wants it like you could put the number before the character's name as opposed to the piece of dialogue so that when you cut when the letterer copy pastes it they're not they don't have to even worry about copying and pasting the accidentally copying pasting the the number in because it's on it's right next to the character's name which never exactly. gets copy pasted in exactly exactly and i think that really just really shows more of how comics works in general and how collaborative it is you know so many publishers and uh are trying to get into comics and they're not really understanding that this is a collaborative effort and you end up with authors who have never even spoken to their artists until the book is done which is bananas you know and without that sort of conversation you end up with clunky parts of the book or miscommunication um, about what something actually needs to look like so making sure that everyone is all on the same page is something that needs to be done at the earliest stage which is the script and not just after the manuscript is written you know yeah, 100%. Is the standard comic script available to everyone? 
Yes. <laughs> For sure. So we are going to be putting it up on both of our websites. So it's available for anyone to, to get to. All you have to do is go to our site, click on standard comic script, and there it is available for download. Yeah, this is not like a pay to play, you know, no. kind of thing. Um, we're very anti that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that was one of the things that we wanted to make sure was like super clear is that like, we're not doing this out of like any want for like, fame, accolades, financial prowess, any of that. It's really all about altruism in the industry. You know, it's it helps us all in the long run, you know? So it may help us, you know, individually to have a good script, but we're thinking long-term. We're thinking big here. You know, if we want to make a change, it has to start somewhere and it has to start relatively small, which is a standard comic script. I'm, I'm hoping that this sort of thing gets people inspired to know that they can also make changes to the industry with the right kind of uh, collaboration, with the right kind of goal setting. Um, you know, if, if you feel like there's something that needs to be worked on, whether it's having standards or getting paid appropriately, that is something that we have the control to do as members of the industry. Said perfectly, Steens. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Um, is there anything else that you want everyone to know before we go? Oh, gosh. Um, what else should people know about the standard comic script? Practice using it. You know, I, I feel like that's, I think some people are going to get it and they're gonna be like, this doesn't feel natural to me. And I understand that because if you've been doing something one way for a very long time, it's pretty hard to wanna to change. I especially know that I hate change. <laughs> it's hard, you know? Um, but I think if you take the time to really like look at the script and understand why things are there, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to accommodate. And that should be your goal anyway, as a creator is to accommodate with your collaborators. You know, it's, it's a group effort and you should want to feel like you are on the same page with the rest of your group. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one general rule of thumb that a lot of, you know, people tell writers is that if it's not in the script, don't assume that the, going to know to draw it. So <clears throat> I think a lot of th things that like get left out, for example, in the comic script versus film, for example, is like time of day. Is it what season is it? You know, like that's going, especially if you're not very specific about like setting or what people are wearing, you know, like you might imagine a beach in your mind, but like if you don't mention that or like whether or not this beach is like a rocky beach or a sandy beach or like if it's, if it's during the winter or if it's during the summer like these are the little details that actually do matter to the story and you won't even realize it until you see thumbs or mm -hmm. you know inks you know like line art and then and then you're going to waste time by like saying to the artist oh i need you to change it because you weren't clear and yeah. so like this you know like i think what I want people to take away from the, the template is, you know, you might, you might feel like, well, I have my way of doing it. For example, like, so a new creator is going to come along and say, oh, this is awesome because I've never been told any which, which way to do it. Right. But creators who have already been sort of used to a certain way of writing, you know, they might be like, well, whatever I know, I know this already. But, you know, I think it behooves any creator to know that there's always something new to learn, mm -hmm. you know, and that like, you know, like it, it has its merits, you know, there might be something in this template that you didn't think about. Yeah. You know, so I think, I think more knowledge is power, right? Absolutely. And then I also think that this is going to get people to realize that a script is purely back of house, you know, like no one is going to buy Batman and expect to see the script, you know, unless it's like back matter and it's like, oh, cool, you get to see how the sausage was made. But 
I think that with this, it makes it even clearer that writers need to realize that this is a part of production and not something that is going to be reader facing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was uh, on a panel with <clears throat> Dave Scheidt and he said something that stuck with me, which is when it comes to comic production, writers write for the artist and the artists draw for the reader. So if a writer is in the mindset that this script is for the reader, then the artist is going to be like, this isn't what I need, you know? So hopefully this is a, a step to, to telling people that this is back of house, not front facing. <laughs> yeah. Your script isn't a chance to show off your shiny prose. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, that's where a dialogue can come in, but in terms of like panel descriptions and like layout and formatting, that's, you know. That's way more important. You know? Yeah, exactly because dialogue can always be changed. I always say that the script isn't final until the comic is on shelves. <laughs> because of how quickly and how often things change, you know, you can't be precious about your script when it is a recipe, you know? This recipe is not what people are excited about when they go to a bakery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they want the, they want the cookie. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like people who are really into the craft, like might be like, oh my gosh, what is this recipe? But like, you know. But that's not the main point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Oh thank yeah, you. thank you for having us.